This is the Mimaki 3D UJ 2207 3D printer. It prints full color, millions of colors, 3D shapes, and the print's done. Let me show you. There it is, right there, check it out. Eyeballs. Now, I'm not an eyeball aficionado, nor am I a collector of eyeballs. Nothing nearly that creepy. The purpose of these is functional because they're gonna serve a purpose, but I wanna show you this first because if you look at them, they look kinda weird, right? The Mamaki uses a water-soluble support material to support the model that you're printing. And so what we need to do is get them off the build plate, get the support material off, and, and then there's some post-processing steps that a friend of mine is gonna help with. Let's get to it. Quick, quick, before he gets here. Welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, probably powered by PCBWay, 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. Okay, he's coming. Here we go, I've got the eyeballs. There they are, they're on the build plate, and I'm wearing the work hoodie because I'm gonna be doing stuff, and my nice hoodie, I don't wanna ruin. So the first thing that we need to do is use this blade right here, and we give it a swift motion, and we kind of get them off the build plate. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those eyeballs right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have a full explainer video on the Mimaki 3D printer and the process it goes through to do prints and how you get it ready because it's fascinating, but that's for another time. Right now, we've got eyeballs to do, so we can do that. This, we just kind of clean off, and then this water-soluble support here. I'll just put it on my wham bam slap mat. This goes back to the printer. You wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and you're good to go. Now with these eyeballs, they are encased in a water soluble material and it's, it's great because you can use an ultrasonic cleaner with water to get the support material off, but there's no need to put them in there like that because what you can do is get some of it off manually. And I, I say that because it is a manual process. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is put on some gloves because um, it's good. You don't wanna get this stuff all over your hands. It's not toxic to get on your hands, but I mean, wear gloves, come on. Just do it! And then get yourself some bamboo skewers, just standard bamboo skewers. And the, the purpose of these is to get a lot of that support material off. Think about it, right? You've got, it's encased in something. And if you can pick away a lot of it, then it's less work for the water to do. So you just go through with a bamboo skewer and you start picking at it. And I'm not even kidding. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an easy process, but you get a lot of it off there. Look at, look at how much, look at how much came off right there. Just right there. You can kind of see the, the, the eyeballs kind of form. <laughs> Use a bamboo skewer because it's not gonna mar the surface. This part, when you have a large complex model, can take some time. And you don't have to do the manual part. I mean, water will take it away, but if you're pressed for time, it's best to get a lot of the material that's water soluble off of your model before you drop it in the water. This is really, I mean, for all intents and purposes, that's gonna, you can kind of see them. It looks like, um, just looks like you picked that stuff. So now what I'm gonna do is, put them in this ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, you can use heat, some of them do it. Um, I'm not going to, just because I've had good luck without it. And sometimes this ultrasonic cleaner uh, heater runs away and I don't want that. So I'm gonna set this to 30 minutes and it's gonna make a loud noise. I'm gonna hit go and then I'll see you in 30 minutes. There we go. Later. It looks like that 30 minutes is up. I got some paper towels because obviously water is wet. We don't need gloves for this. It's been dissolved. I'm just gonna spread some paper towels out. <laughs> oh my goodness, they look absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Here, let's put them on the paper towel. There we go. Oh, these are fan. Freaking fantastic. I got a little bit of stuff on this one. Just gonna wipe it away. So these are the two human eyes that Christian modeled. There we go. Now look at those ones. These are excellent right here. Obviously a different color and I can 
I can tell you what these are going to be for. These are going to be for uh, Pogo, the character from Umbrella Academy. These are the eyeballs for that. And this whole project came about because Frank Ippolito of Thingergy phoned me up and said, hey, you've got that cool Mimaki, right? My, my Pogo needs some eyeballs. Do you think you could print them? Of course I could. So Christian modeled them up. I printed them out. You're gonna, you know, you notice when I held them up to camera there, they're a little bit matte. They're a little bit matte. Eyeballs, typically a little shiny, just, you know, a little bit um, and, and glossy. So there's gonna be some post-processing that needs to happen. Frank over at Thingergy is a master of post-processing and it's for his monkey. So what I'm gonna do is package these up, send them down to Frank, let him get started, and then I'm gonna catch a plane down to Burbank, so off to the post office I go. Hey Frank. Hi Joel. Good to see you again. You Frank Ippolito here, Thingergy, prop and costume, creatures, all sorts of really cool all stuff. All sorts of stuff. Uh, I sent you some eyeballs yep. from the Mimaki. Yes. And this is what they looked like. How'd it go? I'm done already. Really? I, yeah. How is, is that possible? So I thought that I was gonna have to sand these and polish them and blah, blah, blah. Right. It took me like 15 minutes and they were done. What? These are it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow, these look good. So obviously your friend Christian sent these over yep. and these are for, well, these are human eyes. Yeah. And these are going to be for Pogo. Yeah. Ape? Chimpanzee? Um, monkey. Monkey. I was going to get there. <laughs> They're exactly what I needed for what this needs to be. Like the color pops. It's perfect. Like I, when I first got these raw prints, I was like, oh, I might need to sand these a couple of times. Yeah. And, do a couple layers of clear and- Well, that was the original thought, a process, right? Yeah. No, no, no. I hit it with Scotch-Brite and then I clear coated it and they're done. It took me more time <laughs> to clean my, my spray gun than it did to do this. Scotch-Brite? Yeah. Scotch-Brite, like the so, thing that I clean my dishes with. Kinda, there's, there's like an automotive version of that. If you go to oh. the hardware store okay. or you go to a, a paint store, it's just Scotch-Brite. And all I did was scuff the surface because you want to have a mechanical bond when right. you're painting something. Um, and so I just prepped it by scotch brighting it, and that's and then I clear coated it. Like this is crazy. I was I could have done this at home. Surprised <laughs> how easy this was. <laughs> so see, just that little bit of rubbing got rid of almost all the little build lines that are on there. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So you aren't you're not. It's not like a heavy sand. You're just kind of making more surface area. Yeah, just kind of knocking down high points and then making sure I have a good mechanical bond. Okay. For the clear coat. But there weren't that many high points, right? No. Yeah. These these things were really great. Okay, after scotch brighting then, what did you hit it with? Uh, an automotive clear coat. It's a it's a two-part clear coat. Uh, Is that a catalyzed? Yes, yeah, catalyzed. Oh, oh it's clear catalyzed coat. Clear, yeah. clear coat, okay. But I just mixed up a little bit and ran it through my airbrush, and that's it. Yeah. There, there's nothing extra that was done no, here. Nothing like, magical. Not even ma like, No, there was nothing. no ma there, You don't need me. Like, there's <laughs> nothing magical over here. I'm just the catalyst for a crazy project. I guess so. Sit in the corner over there, chew your cud. Okay, so now we, we, this process, super easy. You're yeah. happy with it. I love it. Uh, but the process before, I see molds and I see some what look to be maybe hand-painted things. Can we, yeah. can we talk a little bit about what you would usually do if you needed eyeballs? In the past, we would have a silicone mold and there's a lot of different ways to do molds for eyeballs. There's a, there's a version where there's like four or five different molds where you like cast a core and then you paint a thing and then you cast a, a clear on it and then you do another layer and like all these like multiple things. It sounds complex. It can be. Um, uh, this is this is a hand painted eye um, and you can kind of see on the back side it's a there's a, a white core in here that was part of the original thing that was painted and then they uh, laid in all the little veins and painted the iris and then you put that into another mold and cast clear into it and then you... I see. Oh, so that's not sprayed through an airbrush or anything. That's a cast clear. You cast the clear, but then you still have to like polish it or clear coat it or something after the fact to get the high okay. gloss again. So it's just yeah, yeah. multiple molds, multiple casting. Okay. A lot of little hand painting. Well, I think with this sort of process, I think what makes it really interesting is that it utilizes digital painting mm -hmm. and digital creation. And then it just makes a three-dimensional in meat space copy of it. Mm -hmm. And then using really, really basic techniques, you're able to get something that's screen ready. Yes, it, it, like in relatively no time at all. It's great. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm so happy and so pleased with all this. Like, <laughs> and then to be able to go put this in the, you know, in our display piece 
it's gonna be perfect. Do you wanna clear coat this one first? See that little process? Oh, do I get to do it? Yeah, I could let you do it. Yes! Hot diggity, let's do it! Well, we're here with a monkey. This is Pogo from the Umbrella Academy, right? Yep. Okay, why is Pogo here? <laughs> <laughs> so we worked on the first three seasons of Umbrella Academy. And oh. the VFX supervisor, um, Everett Burrell, asked us to build a, a version of Pogo that they could have on set so that when the director of photography is lighting the set, they could have Pogo there, not just like a stick with a you know a tennis ball or something like that. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So partially that's so the, the director of photography can light the character, you know, can put you know a light so that the hair kind of glistens or the eyes or whatever it needs to be, but yeah. also so that the VFX people that are gonna do the CG version of Pogo have on-set reference of what it looked like in that environment. Pogo wasn't real? Pogo wasn't real, I'm sorry. So this is for the, the physical in real life lighting yeah. that they can then look at for the digital CGI character. And it makes it, makes it more believable and more real yeah. and more in the scene and not just this like computer graphic that's just plopped in the in, the generic environment that's around there. I see, and that's why it's important to have these eyeballs that actually have like a like a reflective shiny surface because if you're going to light a character, that's important. So this is my copy of Pogo. This is a functional Pogo. Yeah. Um, okay. And now I have some eyeballs. All right. I guess we're going to put them in. Put eyeballs in Pogo. Get them in there, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> just shove them in there, man. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Look at that. Those look legit. Frank, this looks amazing. Like, it came together. <laughs> absolutely amazing. The eyeballs, I mean, they're the window to the soul, right? That's what they say. And even though Pogo here is, is not real, the expression really feels real. Like it, the eyes look like they've seen years of, of stuff. They, they feel weathered, you know, they look, they look correct. Yeah. No, these, these eyeballs are like, like, you know, the frosting on the cake or whatever. Like yeah. It, it brings it all together for sure. This was designed by uh, an artist named Miles Tevis and he actually sculpted the face too. So this was all hand sculpted by Miles. So like having, you know, kind of an original piece of, you know, Miles's work, that's like this great thing. And, and then finally got the eyes in and it's all done. It's pretty, uh, I'm happy with it. Oh, this is cool. So yeah. Poco's gonna live here at Thingergy, right? Yeah. Or unless you take Poco home. <laughs> or, or, or wait, does Pogo help you ride in the carpool lane? <laughs> Get in the car. Oh, this is cool. Well, Frank, I just thank you very much. Thanks for printing the eyes. I'm really glad you let us come down here and see the eyes like get installed into Pogo. Really happy I could print them for you. And you guys, I don't think you realize like he's joyful about this and it means more prints, more Mimaki prints are gonna happen and Frank and I are gonna talk about it. Oh, we have crazy ideas. We've got some good ideas. Well, uh, Frank, look in the camera, tell everybody where they can go to learn more about you and Thingergy. Uh, we're on the social medias at Thingergy Inc. And I'm at Frank Ippolito. Website is thingergyinc.com. All right, there we go. We'll yeah. put it all down below. Yeah. All right, I usually wrap things up Thank and you. I offer them a high five. You up yeah. for it? High five. All right, let's do it. Oh, well, hold on, I gotta wrap it up. Oh my goodness. Oh my. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print all the eyeballs. And as always, high five. Want one? Yeah, high five over a monkey. Monkey gonna break. Brandon, how you No. <laughs> That's fair. No. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>